Right, some businesses are happy, but nurses, midwives and the Green Party fuming this morning about the government's big immigration announcement. It creates two queues to residency, a fast lane for some highly skilled groups like doctors and a slower lane to residency for others like nurses and midwives. Here's some reaction. Too narrow, too prescriptive and... By the way, isn't this just the long-term skill shortage list kind of dressed up in a different form of drag? It kind of feels like we are creating a white immigration policy, whether intentionally or otherwise. Are we? Minister Chris Farfoy is with us this morning. Minister, good morning. Morning. Is it racist and sexist? No. Why not? Because it's not. But the outcome will be, won't it? That's what the Greens are saying. You'll have basically white men walking through the borders. And the Greens are wrong. Why? Because it's not racist or sexist. The, the outcome, they say, is racist and sexist. Are they uh, wrong? The, the, the system is designed to make sure we get the skills we need uh, and the people that will come in and do those jobs will come from a number of places and will be um, both male and female or whatever gender they might describe themselves as. But if you look at the labour pool and you're talking about doctors and surgeons, you are talking predominantly about white men, aren't you? I mean, that's their point. No, I don't think they've got anything to stand on. I think they're wrong. OK. Well, what do you want to say to Ricardo Menendez March then, who's just announced on national television that you're instigating a white immigration policy? That he's wrong. OK, fair enough. Let's move on to something more important then, shall we? Um, the ability for Immigration New Zealand to actually get the visas processed that you say will be processed, how confident are you they can do this and what is the time frame? Look, pretty confident. Um, obviously, there's been a hangover for people with processing in the past, uh, but we have hired more staff uh, over the last 12 months to be able to uh, undertake this processing. Um, and while it might sound a bit boring, uh, we've also got a new IT system which will give people who are applying a better user experience and give Immigration New Zealand the ability to move from what is predominantly a, a paper-based system, which has been uh, cumbersome, uh, uh, to an online system which will allow them to work on multiple parts of, a, uh, of an application at the same time and, and dynamically move work. So um, we've obviously given some expectations to uh, Immigration New Zealand that uh, things have to move fast because on the 31st of July uh, we're opening up the border. OK, so you've got 30,000, you're expecting 30,000 applications for this green list that you've created. What's the time frame for processing one of those applications? So we reckon we can get uh, a accredited employer work visa done. So that's a visa first yeah. uh, in about 30 days. So that's pretty quick. It used to be about, about 50 uh, or 60 days. 30 the, days. Uh, OK. 30 days. And you, yep. you promised that? 30 working days. Sorry, I should make sure I clarify 30 working that. days. There's the first caveat. You promised that, Minister? Well, that's what I've asked of the, of the officials because they've told me that's what, that that's what they can do. OK. Do you um, believe yeah. them? Do you believe well, them? I take them at their word uh, because uh, to date um, they've told me things and they've actually eventuated. But hang um, on, obviously. what about yesterday? The broken promise, you said you'd get 80% of resident visas for 2021 processed within 12 months. That's now 18 months. They just reneged on a promise yesterday. So why are you trusting them? We've shifted that out in order for them to have more, more resources available to prioritise the likes of visitor visas. Uh, and work visas. Yeah, but Minister, are you not being a bit naive? That will start to flow in um, from the 31st of July. Is it not, no, no, is it not naive to be, to, to be let down on one day and then believe the promise the next? No, actually, we have asked them uh, to extend their timeframes or giving them a bit more time to be able to get through the resident visas. We said 80% in tw uh, over 12 months. We're now saying 80% at uh, 18 months in the worst possible case scenario. I also said yesterday, I've asked them to make sure that we can stick to the original timeframes because there are 192,000 people who we, we are giving residency that are quite keen to get it as soon as they possibly can. What's, what's the problem at Immigration New Zealand? You're the minister. It must be incredibly frustrating. You've given them an extra $150 million since you came into power and an extra reports of 500 staff. What are they doing? So what's happened over the last two years is the border has closed and a predominant number, uh, the, the predominant amount of revenue that goes into Immigration New Zealand comes from the fees that people put in when they apply for a visa. That has obviously disappeared, which is why at the budget last year, we put extra money in to make sure that the processing capacity of immigration could stay. That's allowed us to keep processing the likes of border exceptions and critical purpose visas and uh, the likes of the residents. But at a visa. glacial pace. The border has been, well, the border has been closed. Um, there have been some numbers put around uh, around processing times in that last couple of years, 
The important visas to look at are the likes of the critical purpose visas, which has allowed people to workers to come across the border while the border has been closed. Yeah. The likes of those, the likes, the likes of those uh, um, visas have been processed. Ninety-five uh, percent of them have been done uh, within about sixteen to twenty but, days. But minister- so work has been done at speed. Other other visas which haven't been prioritised because the border has been closed has taken time because they have been deprioritised. But, but wouldn't the, there be... Le- this doesn't add up, a, Minister, a, this a, doesn't a, add up. Yeah. The borders are closed, there's less work to do, you're still funding them more, there's more staff, you're putting more into it and you're not getting as much out. Are you not worried? No. Um, sorry, the premise um, isn't incorrect, uh, Ryan. Uh, there isn't less work. There's actually been the same amount of work to make sure that they process the likes of critical purpose visas that... They've allowed about 30,000 people to come across the border and work here in New Zealand while the border has been closed. That's taken time. We've also um, had uh, border uh, processing resources go into the likes uh, of border exceptions when we say to the likes of uh, the dairy sector that they can have 300 more workers and, and processing needs to happen there as well. We've also got the large task of 190,000 people who are going to be uh, given a uh, uh, residency uh, in the next uh, 10 or so months. So we want to make sure that we can uh, do all of that. Uh, and we've, the taxpayer has made sure that that, uh, that resource has continued to be there. We're looking forward to the border opening because we'll get more revenue to make sure that the processing can be funded okay. other than from the taxpayer. All right. OK, well, there's 30 working days. There's your promise. Um, so we'll make sure we remember that one. Minister, let's move to net migration. Uh, your goal was to slash net migration by about 20 to 30,000 per annum. What is it now? No, that, that wasn't my goal. Uh, our, goal was is sure we, our goal is to make sure we move to a higher wage, higher skill economy, and that's why we made the changes that we announced yesterday. As yep. you mentioned, the likes of the Green List, we're prioritising the skills that we need immediately to give those people uh, some certainty and attraction for employers in terms of residency. Um, it's difficult to understand what those flows of people will be. We've had some uh, indications of what a, the worst case scenario might be out. Yeah, yeah, Minister. Um, no, no, I understand that. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually asking about your policy. The Labor Party's policy was to cut immigration by 20 or 30,000 per annum. You're saying that the Labor Party currently has no policy and is formulating no policy on cutting uh, immigration into New Zealand. Our current policy that we announced yesterday is to make sure that we've got a smarter and simpler immigration system okay. and that we transition our so way to our ditched that. wage economy. You've ditched that. Because the interesting thing about this is that when Andrew Little announced, when he was Minister, announced this policy, um, he said that if we didn't cut um, the number of migrants coming in by 20 to 30,000, we would need an extra 10,000 houses each year, an extra 20,000 cars on the road every year as a result of that. So do you concede that by going with this policy that you are, there'll be more pressure on house prices and there'll be more congestion on our roads? Well, that's one of the issues that the Productivity Commission is looking at us about our, what they call absorptive ca- capacity to be able to continue immigration at the rate that it has been over the last 10 or 12 years. We are wanting to make sure through the announcement that we were announced in the last 24 hours that we are moving our economy to a higher skill and higher wage economy, um, that we do uh, make sure that we make measures to, uh, you know, the, the likes of worker exploitation that needs to be uh, addressed, which yeah. we have addressed in the last term. Those are the important things that we're trying to address. Not housing or congestion. You can see, you can see there'll be an impact, Minister. I think we've lost him. Oh, Zoom. Immigration Minister Chris Farfoy with us this morning. It's-